as someone who doesn't use Ubuntu, it always intrigues me to look into Ubuntu issues. Not because I hate Ubuntu, not because I want to tear Ubuntu down, but because I'm curious about the issues being faced by the biggest distro in the world. One such issue, and this has been an issue basically since they were first created, is the matter of PPAs and whether you should actually use them. Now for someone with no knowledge about Ubuntu and no knowledge about PPAs, PPAs are a personal package archive. And for all intents and purposes, PPAs are a third party package repo with a slight upgrade over pointing to random servers on the internet because PPAs are stored on Canonical's launchpad. So while you may not be able to trust the software in the PPA, you can at least trust the server they're being hosted on. And like every third party repo, PPAs serve a very simple goal offering software to Ubuntu users that is not being packaged in the core Ubuntu repos, or offering software that is available, but it's a fork of that software, or a newer version of that software than what Ubuntu offers. Now, due to the issues we're going to go over in this video, a lot of people don't like PPAs. So to address this, Canonical's been putting a lot of effort and a lot of money into developing snaps. Now, a lot of people also don't like snaps, but that's a whole separate topic. But when looking into this, this is where it gets really weird for me. As someone who uses a distro with a really strong third-party package community, that being Arch Linux with the Arch user repository or the AUR, I don't really see any issue with PPAs at least at face value, as really they share many of the same problems that the AUR has as well. The biggest being that a lot of PPAs are just maintained by randos on the internet. There are some exceptions where project developers have their own PPA, but most of them are not like that. Most of it is just someone like, hey, I like this software, I like this fork, I will make a PPA to make it easier for me to install and easier for other people to install. Really, the only way to make sure the PPA is safe is to know that other people say it's safe. If people say it's safe, they're using it actively, then it's probably safe to use. And obviously, if it's by the developers of the project, generally, you can assume they're not trying to mess with you unless they are, which is entirely possible as well. I'm not saying don't use the system like I'm not saying don't use the AUR. What I'm saying is before you install random things on your system, make sure you do just a little bit of research to make sure it's probably safe. Also, there are some concerns with overriding system packages with things outside of your distro. Now, most of the time, this is something you intend to do. Say, for example, you have um, Wireshark installed on your system, and you realize the version of Wireshark in the Ubuntu repos is really out of date. But you see there is a PPA that has a much newer version. You expect that to overwrite the version on your system and let you use a much newer version. But with Ubuntu, we're not talking about a rolling release here. Ubuntu tends to be fairly slowly moving. A lot of people just use Ubuntu LTS. So let's say instead of using Wireshark, you find a PPA for a core system library like uh, Glibc or something. You could install that PPA but a lot of the rest of your system is going to expect a much older version. In some cases, this is going to be perfectly fine, but it needs to be done with extreme caution. You don't want to break your entire system. But all of these problems exist on other third-party packaging solutions. PPAs sometimes have the exact opposite problem, where a PPA is just way too old, where a PPA was made for an ancient version of Ubuntu and some point in its life just stopped being updated. For example, this is the Wine Team PPA. Please note that this repository is deprecated. In fact, it's double deprecated. It was replaced by the Wine Builds PPA, which was then itself replaced. This was last updated 330 weeks ago. If you try to use this PPA today, it is 
not going to work. But if you happen to find an old blog post, an old YouTube video, it might point you to this PPA and you try to use it and it's years out of date compared to what you can just get on Ubuntu. This one is a well-known example and most people should be aware not to use the Wine PPA. At least not this one, maybe there's another Wine PPA that you'd want to be using. But there are all manner of other smaller PPAs that aren't well known, that don't have a very clear deprecation notice, that you could very easily try to add to your system, and maybe it's not this old. Maybe you're running 23.04, but it's made for 21.04 or 22.04, and it can possibly cause some damage if you don't know what you're trying to install. Now, that's not to say that packages on other third-party repos like the AUR or Fedora's Copper don't get out of date. They absolutely do. The difference with the AUR is if something is no longer installable or the package is out of date and needs to be updated but no one is maintaining it, users can report this and AUR moderators, the trusted users, will just remove the package or in some cases might decide to maintain it themselves. And when we're talking about copper, packages are made for specific versions of Fedora. So if something is made for Fedora 35, for example, and there's no Fedora 36, 37, or 38 version, it doesn't matter. It's still going to work perfectly fine on Fedora 35, and it's very clear that that's where it works. But even if your PPA is perfectly up to date, it'll always work on the latest version of Ubuntu, no questions asked, a lot of people, firstly, not running the latest version of Ubuntu because Ubuntu has their support cycle period. Also, a lot of people are not using Ubuntu. They're using a distro based on Ubuntu, like PopOS, for example. And on PopOS, a lot of the packages are going to be a completely separate version from what is available in Ubuntu. And this may or may not cause issues, depending on what you're trying to install. But one nice thing about the AUR is if you're using mainline Arch Linux or a distro that is using the mainline Arch Linux repos, you know that the package is going to work from the AUR. There are no Manjaro packages on the AUR. If you want to package something in the context of Manjaro, package it on Manjaro or do some other third-party package repo. But in the context of a PPA, you can have something like the System76 PPA, where it explicitly says this is a PPA for Pop OS and it may cause breakage on other Ubuntu based distros. Use of this repository on non Pop OS installations is at your own risk. So even if you run Ubuntu and the PPA is up to date, there is no guarantee it's actually going to work on Ubuntu. But even with all of that stuff existing, probably the biggest issue with PPAs is the lack of discovery. Say you want to find something on the AUR or on Copper. You would go to the website or use some search tool. You would search for the thing and you would find the thing. And you're done. Now with PPAs, you could dig through all of the launchpad pages, finding a bunch of repos with duplicate packages, out of date packages. You have no idea which to use. So you're probably going to just not do it through that method. You're going to go watch a YouTube video, read a blog, see what other people recommend, and you don't know if you can mix and match these different PPAs. You don't know if it's going to cause issues. You don't know what's going to happen to the other dependencies on your system. It's kind of just a big mess. So basically, you have a centralized place where all of the PPAs live, but then decentralized discovery, making it really hard to find what you need to find unless you already know what you need to find, like you're migrating from a previous system to a newer system, someone tells you about it and things like that. Now, one last thing I want to mention is you'll occasionally see people say that because PPAs are an Ubuntu tech, they should only ever be used on Ubuntu and its derivatives and should never be used on upstream Debian. This is mostly true, especially because of a lot of the reason we've already gone over. If the package versions mismatch, you can cause issues and things like that. And usually people will point you to pages like Don't Break Debian. This is a page about not making a Frankenstein build of Debian where you bring in things outside of the Debian system like PPAs and things like that. But 
do remember that Debian is this system that you can customize to whatever your needs are. So while this is definitely true, and this is something you should take as like a default stance, there are other pages on the wiki like this one here create package from a PPA. If a package is available as an Ubuntu PPA, but not in Debian, you can easily rebuild it and install it on Debian. So there are certainly exceptions where doing this is acceptable. Keep in mind, it's your system. Do whatever you need to do to get your work done. But as I've been saying, do this at your own risk. It is not supported and no one is going to help you if something goes wrong. They're probably just going to laugh at you. I might be one of those people. So at the end of the day, using a PPA is about as dangerous as using like a random deb you download off the internet. But instead of manually loading them onto your system, which is, you know, fine if you pay attention, you're just adding in this repo and then downloading from the repo. But I can understand why Canonical wants to shift away from this model, even if some people aren't happy to what they're going towards, because with snaps and with flat packs and all of these other containerized solutions, you no longer have those dependency issues. If there is an ancient version of an application, it doesn't matter because it's in this container and it has everything in the container it needs, and that's fine. But let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Do you like PPAs? Do you think they've, you know, helped you in your time on Ubuntu? Do you think they're a giant waste of time? I would love to know. So if you like the video, go and like the video. And if you really like the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, check out the Patreon, Scribe, Sully, Barrow, Pay, linked in the description down below. That's going to be it for me. And... Watch my video on the really weird Warty Warthog theme that never ended up happening. It's certainly an event.